Good morning guys, it's Richelle from Monolane Furniture again, back with another flip. Um, I'm glad I didn't flip yesterday because that migraine just made me a bit fo foggy. Bear in mind though, usually the day after a migraine I'm a bit foggy as well, so if I talk more crap than usual, just blame it on the migraine. Anyway, this is what we're working on today. It's a customer's piece. Let's go and have a look. Right, so it's quite old and the reason I say it's quite old is because he's got this key on and he's got these on first thought you would think those were screws I'm going to think they, they may well just be tacks I'm hoping they're screws but they're flathead which gives a bit of an indication of the age um, as are the tops of these ones hopefully I can um, still use those keep retain the originals that's what I like to do uh, it's not on sliders, but there's plenty of room around there, so I'm not worried about any paint. But I'll only do the edge uh, to these edges anyway. I'll probably get some big mama's butter in there. Give it a quick little sand and then get some big mama's butter in there. Make it smell beautiful. And this will all, all just be um, sanded. Sorry, you can hear me thinking. Sanded. Smooth. It needs tidying up. I'm not going to strip it because I'm going to be painting it. I'm not going to strip it, but I need to go over it and get rid of all this um, flaking paint. Uh, yeah. Mm. Sorry, my. <laughs> right, using my usual Bosch professional sander, and I'm using a 100 grit at the moment just because that's what the first one I picked up I usually go 100 120 um, I'm gonna go careful on this it's solid wood it's only a thin piece but it is solid wood but um yeah I'm just gonna go careful on it see what we have underneath this Okay, I think I've made the decision on the paint, the colour I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Deep Duck by Made by Paint. The job I did this week, was it this week? What day are we? Wednesday. The job I did on Monday um, with the canvas cream, I was I was pretty impressed with that product, with that quality. So I'm going to give this a go um, and see if I'm as happy as I was with that one. Darker colours I know, it's going to need an extra coat. The I'll expect the first coat to be quite translucent and then we'll just go from there but really what I'm interested in is how much paint it uses I don't want um, one piece one piece to use a heap of paint the other thing I wanted to say was yesterday I forgot to mention in my my products video unique options and I can only blame that on the migraine I think I was just in a daze so I just want to show you a couple of the products there So I've got some of their just regular paint. So this is furniture decor paint in a hot chocolate. I haven't used that yet. And also this one in a peach. So this isn't mineral paint. They're just, that's furniture paint. So that would, I think, need a top coat. But that's not what I use on the daily. Um, the Australian mineral paints by Unique Options I use regularly. This one I haven't used yet because I'm just waiting for the perfect piece. And whatever I find will probably stay in my house because I love, love, love this colour. So, um, and there's a top coat as well. Where's that? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There. So, this is a really nice product as well. So, my apologies to Unique Options, Australian Mineral Paint. Not that they've said anything. But I was lying in bed this morning thinking, oh, I didn't even mention them. And I use them all the time as well. So, um, shout out to them. Right, I'm going to get on with sanding. I'll bring you in so you can see it. 
and um, so let's see what this comes up like right so I just want to see what we've got here if they are tacks or if they're screws metallic oh it looks like nails yeah I can already see yeah they're not going anywhere so um, what I might do is just try and clean them up as best I can oh, there's even crap in those I'm not going to take it off because I won't get it back on the way, it, the way it is and that would really frustrate me I think I'll try and tape around here and spray them that's really annoying though isn't it It'd be all right if I can get a good finish on it, but I really want a good finish. Is it worth doing that to keep these? What do you think? I might ask, oh yeah, I should keep it. It's original. I want to keep it. I want to find a way to make it work. Okay, sand in now. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just give these a scrub, see, see what I'm dealing with. So I'm using these um, wire brushes, these with Vim Capriol or Shabby Chic, so they're different, well it's got, it's one plastic and two wire, so I'm going to go in with the wire. This is just soapy water, that's not soapy water, that's a brush, this is just warm soapy water, just dishwasher liquid. Mix it up, let's see how we go, no oh, I've got it sat on a tarp as well. It would be awesome if this just came out really nice and I didn't have to put any spray or anything on, but I think I'm probably going to end up spraying it black. But it really is all about getting the best finish, so, oh, that's coming up pretty well. And getting a really nice line around it. That's what I've got to focus on. Stuff's definitely coming off the it, so that's good. I try my best to keep things as original as possible when I can see they've got age. Because I think that's really the best, you know, I, my aim is never to make a piece look brand new. I want it to see its background. If it's worth seeing, you know, if it's a piece of crap, then uh, by all means, strip the bugger but this isn't this is lovely it's coming up pretty well isn't it do you think it's starting to shine a little bit I might get some sauce on it actually I think it's the vinegar in it or the acid at least that helps things like that I've never had much luck with it though if I'm honest I think it's because I'm too impatient I don't have the time to wait and see if it's working this is doing all right though so I've managed to get the paint it was painting these cracks where I guess it had been painted before so the keys looking better If I can just get this key looking, keyhole looking better, I'll be happy. These are a really good investment. I don't know how much they were. You know me, I'm tight. They wouldn't have been much. Right. I'll come back to that. I wonder if the key mechanism, I wonder if they've got the key actually. The me mechanism is still on the back too. Yeah, I'm not getting rid of that. Right, the other thing I want to do, and I'll do this now while I'm here is I'll give this inside a quick little sand I won't show you that I'll just use the detail sander and then I'm going to put mama's butter in it so I'll show you that right so I've given the inside a bit of a sand and when I've been in there I've noticed that the back um, is coming away so I'm just going to 
think I'm just getting a delivery. I'm just going to put a few tacks in the back. It's pretty bad quality wood. It's just ply. So I'm hoping it doesn't split, but at least this will at least give it a little bit more life. Hopefully. If I had smaller tacks, I'd probably use smaller. Yeah, that's why. So, oh, see, I don't know if you see that then. It started to split there, so I just stopped. The, this piece is, is pretty narrow, the, the, the panel or the drawer. If you can see, see it's all peeling here as well. It's not good quality, but still all good. We'll make it work. And one more over here. Right, that's that done. Now I'll get the mama's butter. If you haven't used this stuff, you haven't lived. And all you need for this is um, Dixie Belle mama's butter. I love the orange grove. So this just conditions the wood, I think. It doesn't really um, seal it. As far as I know, you probably could use it as a sealer, but you'd need to put it on quite often, I assume, apply, reapply. Um, so the wax and a pair of undies, that's what I use. Quick sniff test. Oh, oh my God, the sniff test was of this, not of the undies. Oh, geez, Rachel. Right, so I just put it on there and just rub it in. I've seen others using um, wax brushes. Just get it on there, whatever. I'm happy to get it on my hands because it smells so good. And this will just um, give the drawer, the wood, a little bit of a lift. But it also just gives it this gorgeous smell. So, uh, yeah, this is beautiful. Again, um, I get mine from Capriol Shabby Chic. I can't remember the price. They come in two sizes, I think. I think this is the smaller one. I'll be buying the bigger one next time because you can get through it quite quickly. I mean, I say quite quickly. I'm, I'm doing all right with it, but I'd like to use it less sparingly than I do because it's so nice. I'd like to get into the habit of using it on every drawer, to be honest. I just think it's an extra, a nice extra touch. And so when they, whenever they open the drawer, then it smells a bit for a while, you know? lovely and it just gives the drawer a real lift because you know some of them can look real tacky well this did but now it's going to look lovely i mean it's still going to be an old drawer with lots of marks on it but it'll smell good and it just gives the wood a look a much richer look you see i don't know how much you can see actually but yeah, really easy and it makes it's quite a big big impact. So that's that done. What am I gonna do next? Now I need to sand the body. I'll put this drawer away out of my sight while I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do with that friend. So on the body I'm using the this sander um, and I I'm using an 80 grit. That's really dark, isn't it? Oh, it'll do for now. Um, I'm using an 80 grit. I would prefer to use 100 or 120, probably 120 on this because I don't want it to be, give it a rough finish. But what I'll probably do is go over it with this uh, and then hand sand it as well. So I need it to be as smooth as possible to take the paint. Right, this paint is coming off way too easy. I'm going to have to go all in and get this off because painting it over this is not 
a good idea. Look, it's peeling off. That's a bad paint job. So this paint is gonna have to come off, but I'm not gonna use stripper because I don't need to. It's just peeling off. I reckon I could take it off by hand. Look. So I might, I'll carry on using the sander. I'm not gonna have you watch me now because I'm just gonna be doing more of what you just saw. Um, and then I'll show you once I've gone through and gotten off as much as I can with the sander and see what we're left with from there. Right, we're going okay here. It's sort of coming off easy enough. Um, but some areas are kind of stuck down quite well and then the others are really loose. So my aim here isn't gonna to be to get everything off. I just need it to be a surface that isn't going to peel. So if something, if it is really stuck down really well, then it can stay, but I still need to make sure that the edges of it um, are gonna come up. So I'm gonna go in with my scrapers. This is a pack I got from Capriola Shabby Chic. How many's in there? Four, four just different sizes. I suppose the biggest would be the best, would it? Let's have a go. go a bit smaller yeah so like I said I'm not I'm not my aim isn't to get it all off I just need to get everything that's loose off and then also not have any harsh edges so it needs to then be smooth sanded the wood to the paint area so that you know you're not going to see any any marks from it but also it's not going to be encouraged to sort of lift over time it needs to be a really solid edge solid edge solid edge soft edge see some of this comes up really well and then the rest not so much so when you're doing this make sure you go in with the grain too i could put stripper on this but i really don't i don't need to it's you know it's that bad and i don't really like doing stripper unless i really have to Although that um, orange peel stripper would probably be really well, re do really well on this, but I'm not going to do it. Right, I'll carry on going with this. It's going to take longer than I'd anticipated. Normally, I, I don't touch pieces of furniture that have already been painted. Um, I hadn't seen this before it was dropped off, and it's a, a friend's mum, so I'm more than happy to do this. She's um, she lives not far from here, but she's actually from Wales too. So, oh, look at that bit. This is actually quite therapeutic. Do you like peeling skin? You know when you get sunburnt? I might sit for hours doing that. I might not even finish this job today. I might just sit and peel it all day. That's really therapeutic. Right, leave me to my therapy, guys. Good morning, guys. I think we're probably on about day seven in the Big Brother house for this piece. <laughs> I actually came out just now. I was like, right, what should I work on today? As if these didn't exist. So it's out, it's gotta be done today. Um, I've been sanding it and scraping. There's some stubborn bits there. And those stubborn bits are making me stubborn too and procrastinate. So I'm just gonna smash it with some stripper. Let's get all these bits off. Now I'm just gonna put it on. I'm not gonna cover it with um, cling film but because I don't think it needs that extra work time, I think it will come off easily enough. But, um, sorry hearts. It's still flaking in some areas, but it's just ingrained in others. So um, in the vein of trying to stop me procrastinating over this, I'm just gonna smash some stuff on it. And I'll just pour it straight on, I think. No, I won't. I'll pour some into this pot. I always keep my pots. Oh, my hair's looking extra special today because I um I left some con some conditioner in overnight. Can you see? It's real special. And I'm using my um, sleek brush. This is one that I didn't really look after very well, so it's one that I'll throw away. You see, it's still got all paint and all ingrained inside it, and it's the 50 mil, which is really too big. Um, for me, so I'm just going to smash this on here. Just 
pour it on. I should have just poured it straight on. I hope this video's not too long. It's been going on forever. It'll, it's just going to be a comedy one. I don't even know that the finished article is going to be too dramatic either. I might have changed my, my mind with the colour. So we'll see. Right, I'm just going to carry on and get this on here. Um, and then I'm going to go and have breakfast. I'm sorry this vlog is a bit, this one's a bit boring, but... Well, I don't know. I can't even remember what I've said on it, to be honest. What day is it today? It's Friday now. When did I start it? Do you know? It was probably Tuesday. I know that it's one bedside. See, I smash out other things in one day. As soon as it gives me a little bit of work to do, I'm like, oh, I'm tapping out. Right, leave this with me, guys. When you come back, this will be just stripped and look beautiful. Will it? Will it? Come here, I've got my Christmas pyjamas on. I have to put a bra on them. I have to do with this because they're too big. My jubblies be falling out everywhere. <laughs> no one wants to see that. <gasps> right, it's all on now. I'm going to have breakfast, come back in about an hour. It's, um, I can see it coming off on the brush already as I'm doing it, as I'm going back over here. So I can see it bubbling. So that's really good. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned what it is. So this is the Norglass Orange Peel gel paint stripper so i got that from caprio shabby chic I'm not sure where else you can get it from but um i did a review on it a little while back and was really happy with it that was on paint that it was only a few weeks old um so it was much it gave you a good indication obviously it's just three a, a few weeks old so it hadn't been sort of stuck on for long this has been on for years and years and years by the looks of it so i'm keen to see how this works as much as some of it was already flaking, other parts of it were, they didn't want to come off. Anyway, right, I'm gonna go have breakfast, come back in about an hour. Just wanna show you this bubble in here. So that's after about uh, half an hour, maybe 20 minutes. That's what it'll look like when you know that it's working. Right, it's been about 30 minutes probably. Just checked on it and it's bubbling everywhere, so. Uh, let's have a go. I'm going to wear gloves today. I'm good girl. I got these off eBay. I'm sure you can find them locally. This is only the second time I've worn them. But I know this is going to be a messy job. And as much as I'm still bare-legged <laughs> and barefoot, at least I've got gloves on. Okay, so I'm going to use a plastic scraper. Uh, you will have seen me. I got this from, it was a pack of three, I think from Capriola Shamashi and scrape it into a bag. So when you're doing this, you want it all to be disposable, anything that you're using, or the, this can be cleaned off easy enough, but don't put it into a container that you think you want to use afterwards. Um, it's easier just to throw it out. Right, let's have a look. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, and the procrastination ends. This is really cheap wood. It's actually a really thin piece of ply. It's not even this chunky. It's just a thin piece of ply and then these are stretched along the side of it. Using a plastic one just ensures that you don't dig into the wood and damage it. Right, so this is my second go with um, this citri, and is it? No, it's not citri. What is it? Orange peeled. I am got it with me now. Um, yeah, and I'm really happy with it. What I will do after, that's dripping on me there, that's not good. Uh, what I'll do after is I'll go around the edges with the wire brush, my little wire, little toothbrush. I won't use it as a toothbrush, honestly. Um, I got these in a set of three, you would have seen that before as well, it, from Caprio Shabby Chic. Just look at the prices, I don't know. Oh, look at this, though. So. Oh, look at that piece coming up. Look. Look at that. I mean, to be fair, it was a shite um, paint job anyway. It doesn't look like it had been prepped at all. But because it's such cheap wood in a lot of areas, it had just um, gone into that grain. 
so this has just lifted it up really well. Yep, so afterwards anyway, I'll go on it with the, I'll get some mineral spirits, white spirits, I think it's the same thing. Right, and then I'm going to scoop this into this bag. Um, and I'll get some wire wool, I'll actually show you what I do. Because I know this is a part that a lot of people are interested in. Because it's a bit daunting. Um, take you around this side. Yes, the girls are close by. That is so satisfying, you have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to get this done today. But because um, I've procrastinated it over it so long, I'm not going to use the made by paint because I think that's going to take more coats than, to be honest, than I want to do. So I'm going to look through. I don't know that for sure, but I just want to get this one done. And the paint, however many coats it's going to take, it's not going to take long anyway, it's only little. Okay, I'm gonna carry on with this. I'm happy. Right, that's most of the paint off. So now the next step, I'm going to um, scrub this with wire wool and white spirits, mineral spirits. I think it's the same thing, I'm not sure. Um, so that serves two purposes. One is to get off all this, um, all the loose excess that's on there and to bring off the stubborn bits, the wire wool will do that. And um, the other thing is to neutralize the paint stripper. You don't want any remnants of paint stripper on there before you put your paint on. For obvious reasons, it's gonna take it off. As a side note, there is no money in this job. Don't take these jobs on people. There's no money in it. The only reason I'm doing it is because it's for a friend's mum. But there's so much time involved in these. I generally will only take on um, raw or, you know, pieces that haven't been painted previously. If they've been painted, I just walk away. Right, so I'm just going to dab it on with this. Just soak that. And then circular motions. Just scrub. This will get into all the um, nooks and crannies as well. Then after I've done this, actually I'm just going to pour it on. You don't need to be shy about this. After I've done this, I'll need to, I'll wait for it to dry. Then I'm gonna rinse it off again with um, soapy, soapy water. I'll wait for that to dry. And then I'm gonna sand it. So it's a process that no one really wants to do. If it's a piece for yourself, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't not enjoyed this one, it's been alright. It's just a long process and when you're used to doing one flip a day, you know, I tap out pretty easy. If, um, if it's going into day two, then I'm out. But in all honesty, I could have done this in one day. I just, uh, I just didn't really want to. Right, I'll get on with this. And I'll come back when we're ready to paint. Right, so we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. I just wanted to give you a quick visual on um, sanding a piece like this after you've stripped it, you know, so you need to get to all these areas. Rather than having it standing up and working from the side, it's easier to do it this way. And so you're always working down and on a flat base. So I'll do this leg, this leg, the back, the back, spin it and just keep doing that. Then you're not getting... Um, a really sore arm and you can get to the nooks and crannies easier. Hope that makes sense. Right, I can see light at the end of this very, very dark tunnel. So, what I've done so far is I've stripped it, obviously. I've cleaned it with mineral spirits, white spirits. I've sanded it, I've used the wire brush in the detailed areas. Now I'm going to throw some more mineral spirits on it and leave it on there. 
then I'm gonna smooth sand it. This isn't a quick job, guys. I'm sorry if this video is long. I have no idea how long it's gonna be. This isn't a quick job. It's not something I would recommend. It's all right if you go into a job and you quote a job based on stripping it. But when it's almost a love job, honestly, it's a lot of work. But it's also good practice, you know. I don't generally do this, so it's always good to learn. So I'm just gonna go over it with mineral spirits now. Just so I know that this, um, the paint stripper isn't still active. Because if I started to put paint on this and then it started to um, bubble, I'd be devo. And it's not like I could smash it up because it's not mine. This would have been smashed up long ago if it was mine. That's serious. Not smashed up, I would just, I would have paid it forward. <laughs> Some poor soul would have had this. And they would have probably liked it. If they didn't have to do all this. Yeah, so I'm just literally putting this on to, to deactivate it. And I'm gonna sand it again. Because now it's, it's not smooth enough to paint. So I'm gonna need to uh, sand it. So, yep. I will come back when all of that is done. See, I need to sand a bit more there. When all of that is done and we're ready to paint. I can't wait. And see the painting part, it's gonna be so fast. So fast, it's only little. It's gonna look lovely. So much work for such a little piece. But it's an old piece. I'm rambling now. It's an old piece. And it is really nice to bring these pieces back, you know? It's just a lot of work. Oh, hang on, I wanted to give some shout outs. Oh, and I can't remember. Right, firstly, I noticed yesterday that Walnut Lane, I've mentioned her before, I love her logo, love her, the furniture she paints, and I love her staging. She is now a stockist of both Vintage Bird and Purico. Fantastic, really pleased about that. Um, Reimagined by Sam. She's got some more tutorials on um, YouTube. Really recommend going and watching hers. Like she did one on blending yesterday, which I really liked. That's chalk paint generally because um, with blending, it's all about reactivating the paint with water, and you can't reactivate mineral paint because it's got the built in sealer. So, uh, Yep, and there's another one. I'll come back and remember the name in a minute. It's French something. Another Australian one where I watched a, uh, she did a restoration of a sewing machine. Oh, a single sewing machine, beautiful. If I had my phone here now, I would tell you what it was, but I will on the next one. And again, flip it furniture. Go and support her, please, guys. Let's get her up to a thousand. Because when she does get to a thousand, we're going to be doing the mint by Michelle together. She's going to show me up. Michelle's not allowed to watch it. I've told her that. Too embarrassing. She is such an artist. And I am not. <laughs> In simple terms. Right, I'll stop waffling on. I'll get this done. Let's get this finished. I finally have a win on this one. So um, I'd said initially that I wouldn't be able to reattach this um, draw pull because it was nails there. But I've got these little screws, they'll fit through there, which is the first plus. And because the nail holes were pretty small, they'll still screw in. So that's a bonus, I can still use this. So what I'm going to do is just use this deco wax the one I, I tried before so this is a silver one so i'll do this while it's on there i'm not taking that one off because i don't want to risk not being able to get that on in its original format so form format whichever so i'm just going to use this one i won't tape it up because i'm going to tape this up when i paint it so i'm just going to dab it on it doesn't need much because this works really well see so so opaque it just takes it instantly really love this stuff 
just one coat and that's fine and it dry it'll dry i don't need to seal that or anything all right let's do the same with this that'll look lovely then i'll probably end up putting another coat on when i've painted it to be honest but i really just want to have a look and make sure that this was the direction i was going to go in given that there's been so many twists and turns and i also don't know what color i'm going to paint it yet well i know they've got i've got a guide from the customer but i just don't know which paint i'm going to use i was initially going with them um, made by paint but I don't think I'm going to now because I'm ready to cry on this one. So I prefer one that it would be less coats. How good is that? I really like that. Don't understand how it works so well. How this one works so well and the other colours didn't, I, I don't really know. Anyway, I'm starting to feel like light is at the end of this tunnel. I've said that a few times in this video. <sighs> it's been dark. Right, and don't forget to also do the tops of your screws too. You don't want those sticking out like a sore thumb. Right, I'm gonna go and choose my paint. Right, I'm finally ready to start painting. And to put this into perspective, this is now, I started this on Tuesday. It's now Friday. I'm now at the point where I would normally be after an hour. This has been a long ass job. This has been sanded about 37 times, maybe 38. Don't do these jobs for many girl guys and girls. Don't do it. Okay, I've decided to go with um, Minerals uh, Dixie Belle Silk in the colour Quiet Cove. This is just a 100ml pot. I've got more in there if I need it but I would imagine that this will this will do it because this these, these paints have got really good coverage. Um, depending on the finish, I may mix in some top coat with a final coat because some of these are quite matte, but we'll see how we go. Um, I'll let you just watch me put the first couple of strokes on and then I'm just gonna cut because I think this video is gonna be long enough anyway. I'll show you the color. it very well. It's like a pale um, blue-grey hubby's endies. So I'm using my 25ml sleek brush because it's it's pretty much perfect. 38 would work as well but um, yeah because there's little detailed areas, not detailed but small areas, I didn't mix that then. See look at that coverage and it's been smooth sanded by the way that makes me happy i feel like i'm getting some wins now this is almost a one coat job you have no idea how happy that makes me no idea at all well actually you probably you're probably happy as well because this is a long video with lots of rambling lots of procrastinating probably some tears that you didn't see Right, I'm getting on with it. I'm happy. First coat is on and I've used about 50 mil. In all honesty, it doesn't even need another coat, but I will give it another coat because it's gone on to raw wood. So I wanted to have more than just that. So, and then depending on how it, um, how it finishes, how it looks when it's finished, I might, oh, I forgot that bit. I might put a top coat on it, but you don't need to. Um, because it's the three and one, so it's got the built-in top coat and sealer. But if it's a bit, a bit more matte than I would like, then I will. We'll see. I hope I don't have to. Painting is done, people. And there, I've used 100 mil. That's really good coverage. So that's, and I'm not going to um, top coat it after the first coat. It was quite a nice finish, so I'm just going to, going to run with it. So there we are. Quiet coat, 100 mil, one bedside. Sweet. Right, so it seems I may be a bit of a glutton for punishment with this one. When I look back on the photo that the customer sent me of another piece of furniture she's got that she would like to match, it looks like it's got a bit of a black wax on it. So I'm going to give that a go over top of this. So when you're working with black wax, um, the secret really, so that you don't risk um, getting it on there and not be able to get it off, is to put clear wax on first. Um, I don't have clear wax, so I'm going to go with white wax. 
um, which is quite clear anyway. So and I'm going to rub it right in because I'm not really bothered about the white underneath it as well. I just want this little, a little bit of um, dimension really. So I'm going to go on with the white first and that will make it easier for me to move the black around because obviously what you don't want is for this to take over. So now I'm just going to rub that in and it's just going to give it a little bit of depth of colour and tone, tone down the blue a little bit which is what I want to do and obviously it adds extra protection as well. So it's a really subtle difference. I don't even know if you can see it. I might add a little bit more. But it sort of ages it and takes and tones it down a little bit. I may not even need to put the white on first, but I just feel a little bit safer doing that. It would be best to be clear, but the white is going on because I'm putting it, it's a minimal amount that I'm putting on, then it's going on pretty clear anyway. But even if some of that did show through, I don't mind because I'm quite happy with the effect it's given me. Yeah, it's really subtle, but it's giving it a really nice sheen. So I'm going to run with that. So I'm going to do that on the, the entire piece. I told you I'm a glutton for punishment with this one, but I like how it's, um, I like, I want it to look good. You know, I don't want to send it back just like, all oh, right. It got too hard, here it is, finished. Yeah, I know it's not 100% what you wanted, but tough. I don't wanna do that. I'm not gonna make any money on this one at all. But I'm learning as I go with it, so I, I don't mind. It's all right. Yeah, and I like the color that this is toning it down to. This is easier to, to work with than I thought it would be. It smells good too. Yeah, I'm happy with this. What do you think, guys? Well, I hope you might not even be able to see it properly. This is going to be the longest video ever. But I hope you're learning stuff at the same time as I'm learning. Is that even now? So I'm doing it in small sections um, because I don't want to risk the wax drying. And I don't know how long... Let's read it. Oh, it doesn't say. Instructions are on there. Oh, this is... I'm using Carter Millie. Sorry, I didn't say. So this is the Boutique Soft Wax in black. This is the Boutique Soft Wax in white. Um, yeah, so I'm doing it in small sections so I don't want it to dry out and then not be able to move it around. I don't know how long it takes to dry. I'm just happier anyway, working in these smaller sections. So it's really subtle. Oh, I don't know if you can see actually, because I haven't done the rim. So from there to there, it's, the difference is really subtle, but it's just given a little bit of aging, a little bit of something different so anyway hope you can see it i'll get back, get on with the rest now okay this is it guys this is where it all ends and the weekend begins and the tears stop right i'm going in with hopefully without throwing it all over the top um cats and millie cuttlefish again i want to keep it light it's almost got a coastal theme to it um, so I thought I'll play on that. I didn't want to make it dark. Oh, I'm sweating buckets now. These Christmas PJs aren't helping, I've got to be honest. But these satin or whatever they are, sateen. Is that working? Yeah. I like this colour. I like it when the customer just gives me a run with it. And just says you do you I know it'll turn out great should be lucky if this one does should be lucky not getting this one back in parts and pieces uh, full disclosure look at this that's the drawer that was finished as soon as I put the wax on I left it in the Sun just as I was waxing this didn't realize it was in the Sun and the wax bubbled. Of course it did. It got boiling hot. So I've sanded it off and I'll just redo that. It'll only take a couple of minutes. It's just it's just another string to the bow of this hell that is a job. <laughs> oh. Right, I'm just gonna speed this up for you now.
top coat time. I've never been so happy to see a top coat in my life. Fact. Right, we're going in the Cartier Millie Booting 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 Boutique Top Satin Top Coat. Same sponge as I used for the stain. Just cleaned it out. Water, squeezed it out. I've got too much on here, but I'll just work it through the entire piece. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm not religious, apologies if that offends. I've said a lot more offensive stuff in my time than I can promise you. <laughs> right, done. Cajun Club, I'm on my way. I have never been so happy to see a project finished. I absolutely love it and I knew I would and I'm so glad I persevered with her. But man, she tested every little bit of patience I don't have. So just to confirm, as I made a lot of changes throughout, this is on the top is Katz and Millie Cuttlefish with the Katz and Millie satin top coat. The body is Dixie Belle. What was it? Oh, I can't remember the name. What was it? Oh, sorry, I can't remember. Uh, with white and black Katz and Millie wax on the top. I'm not going to go looking for the paint because uh, I'm losing everything today. But there we are. Isn't she beautiful? Thank God.